Hey everybody, Jason here from Grip Tape. Welcome back to another video tutorial where I'm talking about the Grip Tape nodes for ComfyUI. In the last video, we talked about creating rule sets for agents and how that lets you control the output. In this video, we are going to talk about creating images from text and using different drivers to control which model we're going to use to create those images. Now the basics for creating any image is of course to go ahead and put in an input string attach it to a grip tape display image node and hit Q prompt. Let's go ahead and clear this and we'll start over from scratch so you can follow along. So in your workspace here, you just right mouse button, choose add node, go to grip tape, and then under the images item here, choose create image from text. This will give you a node that allows you to create image from text. If you want to then display that image, you just go right mouse button, add node, grip tape, Go over to images again and choose grip tape display image. The shortcut for that would be of course to just double click and type display and then choose grip tape display image. There you go. Connect the two and type a very witty and entertaining prompt like and something that is very relevant to my life. Giant pile of unmatched socks in the style of a 1980s photograph. Go ahead and hit Q prompt and it will begin. This may take a few seconds to generate. The default driver that's being used is OpenAI's Doll E3. And you can see here is the result of our giant pile of socks in the style of a 1980s photograph. So if you're interested in switching out the driver or making some changes to the driver, you can do that very easily just by adding a driver right in here. To figure out what drivers we've got, you just right click, add node, grip tape, go to image drivers, and you can see there are four different options here. There's OpenAI, Bedrock Stable Diffusion, Titan, and Leonardo.ai. If you want to learn more about these, you can actually look at the Grip Tape documentation. Just go right mouse button, Grip Tape, go to Grip Tape Docs, and in here, if you click on Framework, you'll see there are lots of different things to do here with images. If you scroll down to the Image Generation Drivers right there and click on that, you can see the different models that we have available. So there's OpenAI, there's Leonardo, Amazon Bedrock, etc. Let's go ahead and create those four drivers. Um, I can do that by double clicking, type driver, and here you could see the different drivers available. So we'll choose OpenAI, Bedrock Stable Diffusion, Bedrock Titan, and Leonardo AI. Here are the four different drivers right there. Now in order for these to work you will need to have some API keys available. To figure out which ones those are, again go to the uh, grip tape menu, star on GitHub, if you scroll down to the installation section, you will see this add API keys to your environment. You can see the environment variables that need to be set in your .env, and then links to get the API keys here. This is only if you're going to be using the grip tape nodes to create images. If you're using Stable Diffusion on your own machine, you don't need these, obviously, and you won't be using these nodes to create the images. You'll be using the Stable Diffusion nodes. But if you want to create nodes using these instead of Stable Diffusion, by all means, grab your API keys, throw them in your .env, and here we go. All right, so for OpenAI, this is the default. And basically all you do is you take the driver from these and you just connect it to driver right here. You can see the different models that are available. So we have Dolly 3 and Dolly 2. And the default size for Dolly 3 is 1024 by 1024. That would give us what we've got here. If you want to change that, for example, I can go over here and choose, let's do a widescreen format, generate a prompt, cue the prompt, and we get this image which is rather cool and looks a lot like uh, the pile of socks in my living room. So that is OpenAI and how that works. For Amazon Bedrock Stable Diffusion, we will connect that driver in. And you can see uh, Stable Diffusion works a little bit differently. We've got a lot of different presets available. So we could choose like a low model, a neon punk. We'll try that. And we're just going to say a giant pile of unmatched socks. And you can see the width and height here are 512 by 512. That did not give me a result I was very excited about here, so let's choose instead um, cinematic, analog film, photographic. There we go, that's a little bit better. Sometimes you gotta play around a little bit with the different style presets to get exactly what you want. And of course you can play with the width and height. One of the things you'll notice is that on both of these drivers, the Amazon Bedrock Stable Diffusion and the Amazon Bedrock Titan, you'll notice it has this seed value in here. And basically every time you do a generate, if control after generate is set to randomize, it will automatically randomize the seed value and give you a new result. Whereas with OpenAI and with Leonardo, 
it will just stay with the same seed value. And so you have to change the result by changing the input text. But you can see what we get here with Stable Diffusion. Let's go ahead and try Titan. We'll drag that one in instead. And there we go. The last driver we're going to look at is the one from Leonardo.ai. It's a pretty interesting site. It's got lots of different models that you can use, and you can even train your own, which is really nice. Basically build your own model off of your own artwork uh, for use. So let's show you how that one works. So inside here, if you go ahead and choose the Leonardo.ai driver, you can choose different models available to you right here. I just picked a handful from the website. If you want to see what those look like, go ahead and go into Leonardo.ai, log in, launch your app. And then if you click on the fine tuned models, you can see here a list of all the different models that are available uh, that you can choose from. And some of these are on the site. So for example, if we wanted to use the uh, Lighting XL, for example, we would just come over here and make sure you choose Leonardo Lighting XL. And then you can type in your prompt. In this case, I'm gonna say unmatched socks, cue that. And you can see we get some unmatched socks. Kind of an interesting look. Let's see what other ones we have in here. We'll choose uh, Vision XL. And just like all of the other drivers, like sometimes you need to play around with a prompt, you need to choose slightly different models, play with the random seed values until you get exactly what you want. Certainly an interesting look, but not quite a bunch of unmatched socks that I was looking for. Let's see what other models are available. So this is looking at the fine tune models. We could also go and take a look at community models. Um, so let's say, for example, we wanted to do, let's say we wanted to do the isometric cute objects. Now I don't have that one in the pull down over here. So if we look, you can see that isometric is not in there. Well, if you click on the image, you'll see a bit of information about the model. And then if you click on view more, it'll open up a page that will show you some images that were created with that model. And most importantly, it'll show you the ID of the model itself. So you can just copy that, jump back over into Comfy. Instead of choosing your dropdown, see this little parameter here called use custom model, turn that on, paste in the value. And then the next time you run this, it will use that. So why don't we say two colorful socks like that. Now, instead of using Leonardo Vision XL, it's going to use the model that we just chose. And you can see we get two very cute, adorable socks. So there you go. Those are the basics of uh, how to use the create image from text using some of the different drivers that are available to you. You will notice that there is obviously an input for an agent and an input for an input string. As it showed in the last video, the input for the agent allows you to choose different rule sets and give control as to how the agent is going to um, go about creating the prompt to create the image. For the outputs, you can also output the agent if you want to feed that into something else. There's also a file path node if you decide that you want to take this image and actually use it for something. Um, what you can do if we just go to display text here and display that, cue this prompt, you can see the URL for the image that was created. So whatever is created here, you can always go and just find it and grab it if you'd like to. Okay, so that is the creating image from text node. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the describe image node, which is available here under grip tape images, grip tape run image description. And what this lets you do is input an image and then get some information about it. Thanks very much and have a great afternoon or morning or evening. Enjoy your day.